Because this is Mubeen, we are talking about the cardiovascular system general principles. The lecture today is really important. This lecture is about the autoregulation of the blood flow. So, let us start. The very first thing to understand is that when we talk about the regulation of the blood, we do not talk about the regulation of the blood pressure. Instead, we talk about the regulation of blood flow over a changing pressure. Now, also understand this thing that we know the, the equation for flow equals delta P over resistance. So, what that means is that the pressure, so if I have a blood vessel here, let me make that here. If I have a blood vessel here, this is pressure on one end, this is pressure on the other end, and this is the length of the blood vessel and you know the other things, the diameter and the viscosity would contribute to the, to the resistance. In this blood vessel, the pressure is determined, the flow is determined by the gradient of the pressure considering that the resistance stays the same, diameter is not changing. When we talk about the flow regulation, what we mean by that is that if the pressure changes, which means that either the volume is changing or the resistance is changing or the, in the resistance, the diameter is changing. So, the blood vessel diameter is becoming bigger or smaller. When the pressure changes, our body would like to regulate the blood flow. And what is the reason for that? The tissue cells, the tissues consider or need only the oxygen and nutrition and the removal of the waste products. That is all they care for. They do not care for what is the blood pressure in the body. They do not care for what is the diameter of the blood vessels. So, the primary key driver is the flow because flow is responsible to bring the nutrition and oxygen over and take or remove the waste products and carbon dioxide. So, remember this as a, as a healthcare professional, the regulation is about the flow and not about the pressure and the diameters. Now, our body is so smart in keeping the flow the same that if we look at it here and this chart or this graph you would actually may end up seeing in the USMLE and in other examinations. Imagine that this x axis is the pressure. This is mean arterial pressure. We have talked about what is the mean arterial pressure in, in another lecture. This is flow of the blood. Now, what happens is let us say this is 70 millimeters of mercury and this is this point is 175 millimeters of mercury. Again, this is mean arterial pressure, not systolic or diastolic. This is mean arterial pressure. Our body has this magical quality to keep the flow, blood flow constant over this, this range of pressure. So, pressure on a, in a blood vessel can change from 70 mean arterial pressure to 175 mean arterial pressure. And even then, the blood vessel and the system around this can continue to have a flow which is constant. So, the question today that we are going to answer is, how does that happen? Now, before that, the graph you would see is that the flow reduces. And after that, you would also see that flow increases. So, we need to answer a few questions here before we go and see the theories of the flow. Let us say this is the point A, this is point B and this is point C. So, the first question is what is happening to the flow here? Why is this flow kept constant here and what happens to the flow here? Why is this flow increasing? So, let us answer these two questions, the point A and C, and then B is the discussion that we will do today. Look, it will be useful if we can actually put a blood vessel here as well. In this area, blood vessel is maximum, maximally dilated. It is as relaxed as possible. It cannot relax anymore. That means when you put the blood in it, when you put some blood in it, because blood vessel is really dilated, the flow is really changing as you put more value and the pressure is not changing because blood vessel is maximally dilated. Now, as the, as 
the volume increases as the flow increases and as the pressure continues to increase. What does pressure increase mean? That means the diameter would start reducing. So let's say here the diameter of the blood vessel is this much now. So as the diameter reduces and the pressure increases, the flow here needs to be kept constant. So we'll talk how that happens. Then at this point, so as you're seeing that the pressure is increasing, at this point, the blood vessel has constricted as much as it can. It cannot constrict any more. It cannot close down any further. And because of that, any further pressure changes, for example, by, by the uh, increased volume coming in, any further pressure changes would cause the flow change as well because blood vessel is not able to control it anymore. So this also tells us one more thing. The flow change will be governed by the blood vessel's diameter primarily. This is that we are giving that viscosity is not changing, the blood volume is not changing, uh, other physiological parameters are not changing, they are constant.